What's up, everybody? Sean here, Most of the Metal. Hope you're doing well. This is the March 2021 edition of the Metalhead Tote unboxing. Um, I do one of these every month. If you've never seen the video before, I have a big tote down here full of relics from the past going all the way back to probably the early 90s. Catalogs, flyers, etc. And I just reach down in here and, and pull shit out and we talk about it. If I can remember what the hell it is. Um, but first up in the background, um, this is one I talked in one of the contest video entries I did. I can't remember which one. Uh, they had asked one of the questions was what's a, a grail or, or what's something you are looking for to getting your hands on in 2021. And mine was Lamp of Murmur. Um, and I finally got one. Uh, Air of Ecliptical, ecliptical romanticism, romanticism, Jesus, on Death Cult. Um, what bummed me out about this, though, I'm happy to get it, but if you can see that, that is a nice ding, ben, blobbity, blobbity. It arrived that way from, I think they used uh, DHL. So that's a, that was kind of a bummer to get it that way. It was not Death Cult's fault. Um, the, the box was literally, like, bent on the corner. I didn't even think you could bend one of these um, LP mailers that way. It wasn't your typical LP mailer. It had, um, I think it had just enough space in it to where it would allow it to bend. And it's not a huge deal um, to me. Um, it's it's kind of like buying a new car, though, and you get a scratch on it the first day. You know, I know over time this, this album's going to have bumps and bruises along the way. Um, but, you know, you get the new car, and the second day, somebody dings the door on it, and you're like, fuck, you know, I just got this car. Uh, not a big deal, again, because the car is probably going to get dinged over the years, and eventually, you're not going to give a fuck. And that's probably how I feel about this in a few years, and I can at least I have a copy. Now, this goes for, I think, people are paying two, three hundred dollars for this fucking thing. Um, but it is good black metal. Hopefully you can hear it. In the background, I'm listening to the album, which is not my typical setup. Uh, it also came with a poster. Very cool. Um, this is a, a band that gets a lot of recognition lately, a lot of hype. Every time they put something out, it sells out. I don't know why they don't just make 500 or 1,000 copies and be done with it instead of these press and repress. Maybe it's a money thing. I don't know, but it's the amount of time it takes to repress stuff and time and effort and cost per unit, I would think it would be cheaper to not repress it, but um, that's just me. Uh, I think, you know, they, they bitch about flippers and stuff. It's like, well, make enough copies of it and you don't have to worry about that. And people don't have to wait by their fucking computer with their mouse and fucking refresh and all that shit. So that's just my bitching for the day. Um, we're going to go digging into the crate. First, uh, this is a bag, okay, um, record store day, 2014, I like the vinyl is dead picture, I thought that was kind of funny, um, long live vinyl, I thought this was a cool bag, kind of a broken record, on the front there, you can see it shattered at the top, I thought this was kind of cool, and I didn't realize it's, when I, again, I talked about it in one of my other videos, we're here like 2014, I'm like, oh, that was just a couple years ago, well, it was actually seven years ago so getting old um, next up this is a envelope I got wow this is really old um, back when I first ooh, this is probably 20 years old okay I know that based on the address I don't even know <coughs> what's in this manila envelope but um, maybe cover that uh, doesn't really matter I don't live there anymore that's um, a handwritten um, envelope from Chunks of Records, uh, the dudes that are in Bouncing Souls. Uh, that's their record label. They sent me, I don't, there was probably something else in here, but um, an order form of some sort. And this is how we used to order shit back in the day, folks. Had to fill out pieces of paper and send in checks or money orders. Hey, this is from the early 90s. There's a flyer from Bouncing Souls, Warp Tour 1999. Tour dates. Uh, I don't think I ever saw Bouncing Souls live, but there's actually a couple of cool stickers in here that I found. So I might keep those, but I might put them up somewhere. 
Next step. No fucking idea what this is. This is a uh, Dead Flyboy Flypaper Volume 3. This looks like some kind of a weird flyer about bands or something, and you can sign up for the mailing list. Um, out of Racine, Wisconsin. My hunch is I got this sometime when I was up in Wisconsin, obviously about um, around the time I went to one of the Milwaukee Death uh, Metal Fests, is my guess. Um, looks just like a generic uh, thing. Here's what we've been listening to. This is why marijuana should be legal. Um, things of that nature. Not much Not much here. Dead Flyboy, if I remember, it was a group. Um, so I wonder if the band kind of put out flyers or something. Maybe people know, if you know who Dead Flyboy is, but um, I remember that name somehow, so I have to check them out. Look them up. Here's another bag. Another record store day bag from, this is like a typewriter from 2015. You can see the date. I saw the date down here in the bottom. Looks like April of 2015. Cool little trinket. Uh, this is something, looks like from Pit Magazine. There's a Warrior Soul. If you remember that band from the 90s. Um, I remember the song Love Destruction. Off the top of my head, I'm sure there's more. I probably ripped this out though because it's a story about Gigi Allen. Uh, I, was, I am a fan of Gigi Allen. That's a picture of him when he was in prison. And it looks like it's part of a interview. I probably have the rest of the interview somewhere in this bag, but this is an old school Gigi Allen interview. Hopefully I have the rest of it here somewhere. Next up, Volume 3, Issue 5 from 1995. This is a copy of Subculture Magazine. I don't remember where I got this, but some cool ads. Earache Records there. Um, <clears throat> some bands in here, Pig Face, Machine Head. Oh, wow. Roadrunner Records when Machine Head was getting popular. Or, I think that was their first album. Um, Thorn is in here. I don't remember where I got this uh, magazine. There's not much to it, really. Um, old picture of Rob Flynn when Machine Head was just starting out. Uh, looks like there's some uh, reviews in here, some show announcements. There's a little thing about Solitude Eternus, who I came to discover later in life, uh, not when this came out. Um, concert reviews. Again, uh, this is a Slayer Biohazard and Machine Head review from the Eric Ballroom, 1995. I did not go to that show, but um, then advertisement on the back for Grip Incorporated. Incorporated. This was Dave Lombardo's band, if I remember correctly, after he left Slayer, and they had their little falling out. Um, so based on the stuff on the bottom here in the back, I'm guessing this came out of New York, or New York, Chicago area sometime. But yeah, this came out in 1995. That was 26 years ago. My goodness. Um, and yeah, that's Machine Dead on the cover. I didn't realize that. Um, Rod Flynn there over here. Um, when they first started out. I actually kind of liked the first uh, one or two Machine Head albums. I thought they were pretty good. Uh, here's the other part of the GG interview. Social D is on one side. And there's another part of the GG interview. And a nice picture of GG Allen there. Um, I don't know if he drew it. Someone else drew that, I think. But, um, yeah, this is the other half of the uh, interview after he got out of prison, looks like, in March 26, 1991. Um, I think he, he had talked about killing himself on stage, and I think he got uh, arrested and never ended up doing it. Ended up dying of a drug overdose. But, um, yeah, again, a lot of people hated Gigi Allen. Um, because of his 
antics, um, which I, I get to an extent, but um, also he actually wrote some really great songs. A lot of people don't realize that if you actually dig into his catalog. Um, there's a lot of catchy stuff there, so I'll do some more on Gigi one of these days. This catalog is super old because the address on the back here, I don't live there anymore, probably doesn't matter, but first class mail. Um, but this is an all, all black and white catalog. I can get Trickster there, Grateful Dead, Warrant, Skid Row. This Janet Jackson poster was really popular. Uh, but this is from The Right Choice out of Flushing, New York. Uh, Flushing is where my New York Mets are out of. Uh, if you wanted a Kip Winger poster right there with his shirt off, you could get one of those. Or a Clint Eastwood poster. Uh, I don't remember how I got on the... I think this was all posters. Buy four, get one free. There were a lot of um, female, half-naked female posters too. I mean, they kind of knew their demographic here when they put these catalogs out. Um, but again, this is another... Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, posters, and you can buy CDs. And what I would do, these were um, rare rock and metal compact discs. Um, some of these are like $30, $40, even way back then. This one here, Baja Spirit 3 CD, $70. So this is like an import special where, and my local record store used to get these um, imports where they would get them from like Europe and shit and, and, and jack up the price. And you could also buy some rock t-shirts there. Slayer, Metallica, COC, Pantera, etc. And then on the back, well these were door posters if you wanted a scantily clad woman for your poster. But I got this catalog based on the address. Uh, this would have been well over, this would have been 20, 30, about 30 years ago when this uh, catalog came out. So, very interesting. I never did have a door poster, but some of them were kind of cool. Some of them, not so much. James Dean and whatnot, but yeah. This is how you used to do it, kids. We had to buy posters and shit from a mail order catalog. It's not fun. Uh, go through a few more things here. Again, I don't really look at this stuff ahead of time. I just grab it. Um, this is a zine, it looks like, Barbed Wire Enterprises. Um, the back here, poster flags from Europe. Um, you can buy them locally, it looks like, based on some of the posters. We got Obituary, Slayer, Divine Intervention. So this was in the 90s sometime. I usually try to look at the posters and try to gauge World Demise was out. Um, so if they were pimping that Slayer Divine Intervention, I'm guessing sometime when did that come out? 90, late 90s maybe? Um, but yeah, it's just another black and white catalog with t-shirts, posters, different pieces of swag you could buy from bands. Um, I used to spend hours looking through all of these. I would usually... Um, Get, a, get them in the mail throughout the week and then when I wasn't in school um, or working I would collect them all and then when I had a day off I would sit down with all these and go through and um, circle what I wanted what I didn't want, what I already had um, etc. But I don't know where this was out of. I was trying to find the order form in here just curious because there's no website or anything so if anyone oh here it is no, 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 no. nope sorry you guys don't want to watch me try to figure this out but I'm kind of curious no no address or anything in here this is kind of odd so I don't know how I would have ordered anything it's got prices blah 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 Surely it's on the back page, that's where it usually was. Oh, St. Well, barbed wire. I guess it was out of St. Louis, Missouri on the last page at the bottom here. I don't know if that is where they were out of, but um, very cool. I used to go through these, like I said, and just check things off that I wanted. Had limited funds at the time, so I didn't have a lot, but 
Um, this is another zine. Indecent exposure. Three times a winner. Maximum rock and roll can suck it. Kind of funny. Billy Milano, home of the Bray, 100 demons, pound for pound. So this is probably a local thing because a uh, hardcore thing out of Illinois because pound for pound, if it's the pound for pound I'm thinking of, we're friends of mine or are friends of mine. I'm almost going to see you real quick. There's something about Johnny Vomit in here. Um, home of the Brave out of Denver. Crazy Jason. Hell Stomper. 100 Demons out of Connecticut. Absolute Pie. NGS Records. Advertisement. So, yeah, this is probably a local zine for uh, the somewhere in the middle part of, uh, of Illinois, is my guess. But no other information there. A couple more here. This is a little tinge of purple. Let's see what this is. Relapse Records Winter Catalog 1996. It's Neurosis on the cover. On tour with Pantera. I did not realize Neurosis toured with Pantera. Interesting. Or I forgot. I, I like these Relapse catalogs. Um, some of them came in color, which I preferred, uh, just because I could really see uh, what I was getting. It's not a huge deal. But then some of the pages were not. I know it's probably more expensive to print in, in color. Um, this is kind of close to what I used to do. If you look, if you can see Malicious Hate there, you can see I drew a star on that one, uh, which is one that I um, thought about getting. Or it was either that or Malevolent Creation. I don't know. Um, and then over here on the Neurosis part, probably see right there I had a little star kind of showing you how I would go through and tick things off I, I eventually bought all those things I don't know if it was from this catalog or not but um, and again back then <clears throat> I had no way to listen to neurosis uh, or anything like that without just buying it so what I would do like if I saw an advertisement like this for through silver and blood uh, I had this uh, Spectrum Fest. I might still have that Spectrum Fest um, CD. But if I saw an advertisement, it, to me it was like, ooh, I want, that must be really good because it's it's highlighted. Um, even though that wasn't always the case. And here's like the instructions for the order form and, and how to order. And then the back here has a advertisement for Brutal Truth. Um, Trend Kill Suicide. That was an EP they put out. That was... Uh, that was the, I think I started, I discovered Real Truth before that, Extreme Conditions, Demand Extreme Responses, I think was the first Brutal Truth album I had, and I really started getting into the grind uh, after Napalm Death. Um, and I didn't know where else on the back, Cannibal, Brutal Truth tour with Cannibal Corpse, very cool. Um, a lot of these magazines too would have, um, it says here, see page 18 for full tour dates, so Relapse was really good. Again, no internet, so we didn't really, we had to rely on these magazines for tour dates and plotting out our um, summers. But yeah, you can see here, Neurosis on tour with Pantera and Biohazard. And Brutal Truth on tour with, looks like, Immolation and Cannibal Corpse. Uh, and then at the bottom there, it looks like a Mortician, Incantation, and Anal Cunt. So, uh, that was pretty cool. So that's how we used to find about tour dates. You'd get these magazines a month or two ahead of time. And, um start plotting out your time like hey anal cunts coming here with um whoever on this date but pantera's coming on the same day which show do you want to see pantera or, or anal cunt um back then i would probably opt in for pantera but it was kind of i'd keep a catalog or a list of all the shows coming with dates handwritten and just try to keep track of which shows to go to that's how you had to do it and then you if you were lucky you could just walk down to um couldn't buy tickets online you had to walk to i think bergner's or one of those places that had a Ticketmaster outlet and you could walk in and buy tickets or some of the local record stores would have um, tickets too so yeah fun times down memory lane but that's how we used to, i used to buy magazines like this or get them in the mail i'd buy my t-shirts my records and get my tour dates off from a, a magazine like this so 
so that's it for the March edition of the tote. Hope you guys like that. I don't know if you guys can see. You probably can't see that. Metal Mikey's laying on all this stuff right now. Um, so I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. I'm going to make one, like I said, once a month. I really enjoy going through these old catalogs. I'm glad I kept these. Um, I don't know if other people keep these types of things, but I do. I have a ton of magazines, too, um, right over here. And up here, you can see right, these are all, I have all the decibel magazines uh, from issue one with all the flexies. Um, but I also have old pit magazines and um, Kerrang and Rip and some other stuff. So I'll probably go through those one of these days, too. So I hope you guys enjoy the trip down memory lane and hope you all have a great day. Later.